Hi, good evening all. In this video, what would be the five things you would do if you were general manager of the Buffalo Sabres? Coming up. Well, I was asked to do a video. What I would do as general manager of the Buffalo Sabres, and instead I turn it into the five things. I just kind of put a list of things together that kind of for me are glaring that I would do if I was GM of the team. So let me know later, guys, what you would do, because I'm sure there's going to be things that I completely forgot about, you know. But these are things that stand out for me. Shout out goes to Jake Hurto. I think it's, I got that right, Hurto. And he's the one who asked me to do this. So I want to do a few videos tonight. So I'm going to just get moving, guys. And um, we've got a major thunderstorm out there. And I, I, just in case power goes out, I want to get at least something on video. So number five, okay, and then this is my usual thing. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just have always uh, usually five things when I do these type of videos. Number five, if I was general manager of this current team the way they are right now, okay, the way everything is right now and the expectation level, we know it's not high. I would make sure, no matter how good things are going, if we overachieve, we always have $10 million of cap open, no matter what. We need that safety net because we have an owner that will let us spend it if we ever need to, you know? And having that cash open is security, no matter what way you cut it. Money talks in this world. Forget uh, fans that think uh, people won't come to our team. Money talks. Money talks in this life. So I would always make sure we have a flux of cap of money open all the time. You see many teams out there, they're boneheaded. They, they really, you know, you see average franchises that are maxed to the cap. And, you know, it's just, it's not a good idea, I think. I think you always should have money open because that way, if you want to change the complex of the team, you can. You got that option, at least. Number four. For me, it's a no-brainer, this one. We need to get a serious leader in our dressing room, I believe, you know? Granado can't be the leader forever. Sooner or later, some somebody wearing skates that is in the middle of those hockey games has to be the leader. And we don't have years to wait and waste without a serious leader on the team. There's no reason we can't go out and get a veteran leadership on this team. We got the money to do it. And I would like to see them do it. You guys heard me talk about Chara before. I don't care if he's washed up. What he brings in the dressing room can never be washed up. And, and some... Just having the kids around a guy like that, not only is he a giant, but he's a guy that's won the Stanley Cup, he's a Hall of Famer. Those type of guys, the impact they can have on young lives is incredible years later. So I'm a big believer in that. And I would love to see, and I'm, th I'm grateful that Chara's still out there because there's always a chance. You never know what Adams is up to. There's always a chance. Who knows? There's always a chance he might be thinking this way. I don't know. But I would love to get a serious leader in our dressing room. Somebody that we're like, oh, wow, like, you know, this is really going to help the kids. That kind of thing. All right, number three. This is a little tricky to do. We keep the team young as the next few years pass by. We keep the team young. There's a way to do that. Everybody starts getting older, but we don't, you know, we don't keep guys that are 28, 29 are just average players. We got to move those guys out, especially if we can bring young studs up that we've drafted, like Quinn, for example. You know, we've got to start putting faith into our draft. 
We do. We got to start putting faith into our, our draft picks. I mean, we know next year that um, Power will be on the team. I'm guessing Quinn will be on the team. Not this year coming. I'm talking the year after. I'm guessing Quinn will get some time this year. We're, we'll see. But these, uh, this is something that that's a little tricky to do. But it's it's doable, you know, as long as you're keeping a, tra a track, not just on your roster, but on the age of it, you know. You should be keeping a track on that too. That's important because, um, you know, there's teams that are older in the league we don't know about. Everybody's talking about, like, Steve Eisenman is doing such a great, great job in Detroit. They're one of the oldest teams. They're not a young team like ours. They're not. All right. Number two. This one, uh, yeah, over, yeah. Heart, speed, and love, of, uh, and love for the game over talent. You're never going to convince me that talent only wins Stanley Cups. You'll never convince me of it. If you don't have a love for the game and you're just doing this for money and... Um, selfish reasons you're never going to win a championship it's just the way it works i really believe that some people will some people want looks i've seen some people on the wrong end of things win titles but the majority you know if you have heart and i put speed in there because we're in the speed era of the nhl there has to be speed in somebody's game if there's no speed you're really You've got to be careful then. You've really got to have somebody that has the smarts of a 35-year-old veteran when he's on the ice, if he's not too fast. So speed is really important. So yeah, that is the one technical error that I believe uh, edge that in the game that you have to make sure a player has speed, right? But heart would be the first thing I look for in a player. It'd be the first thing I look for. Somebody that hates to lose. That will attract me before somebody that can pick off corners all the time because that guy in game seven in overtime is going to choke. But this guy here that hates to lose, he'll find a way to score. That's what I believe I do. You know, I tell you, I, I, I hated losing. <laughs> I hated losing when I played. I hated it. I didn't care. I'd win it. I'd, I'd risk my life. I didn't care. You know, like there, it, you just have to have that. I believe you have to have that instinct or else it would turn me off as a GM. I wouldn't be turned on to somebody that's spoiled brat. I just wouldn't be. No, it's got to be somebody that loves to win. And, you know, I, I think you guys know what I mean. You know, it just, I, I can't, I can't go with it. Now for me, number one, if I was the GM of this team, I want this team to have more grit. This is what I, this is my hope, my vision as a fan, as what I'd like to see happen is I'd like us to get some more gritty guys, you know, um, either through the draft or whatever, and maybe we'll get them in the later rounds, whatever, whichever way, trades, you know. If it was, if we could turn back the clock, folks, I would trade Jack Eichel one for one for Mike Pekka, hands down. I don't care if he's not going to have the great career Jack's going to have. This is the guy that's going to get us to the championship. This is the guy that's going to get us to the finals. This is just the way I feel. So guys like that are rare, you know, leaders that have grit. Guys that have grit are usually leaders. They hate to lose. They'll do anything to win. And I want to get hated all over the league. I want this team hated. I want every fan base to hate our guts eventually. Yeah, that's my vision. I, want, I would love nothing more than the Buffalo Sabres to be the most hated team in hockey. And on that lovely note, I'm going to call it a day with this video. 
All right, so you, you guys tell me your five things. I probably missed out on something. For me, I, I, I slapped these five things together in about 10 minutes. I didn't really think it out, you know? So there's probably things here I haven't thought of that you guys will. But these are things that for me stand out, especially the top two, you know, getting, getting a gritty team for me is way more important than a finesse team. Because ask Colorado if they had more grit, if they would have won the Stanley Cup last year, I bet you they would have. And I think Colorado will address that this year, you know. Colorado, you've seen the look in McKinnon's face, how disgusted he was. What happened to their team? You've seen it in his interview. He was disgusted. He basically says, I haven't won shit here. He's basically calling it out. It's like, enough. You know, we've got a phenomenal team, but come playoff time, we don't have the guts. It's time that we take a step, you know, up like this. I'd like to establish that ahead of time, like a team like Boston does. I would. Yeah, that's what I like. This is what the Toronto Maple Leafs lack. Remember when they got Feligno, they thought they had the great, come on. You know, like this is, for us, we, we want to develop this in our system. The Bruins develop these type of players, guys. They don't just find them, they develop them. This is why we always hate the Bruins, because they're always so goddamn tough. Think about it. Okay, folks, let's close it there. I got a few more videos to make. See you in the next one.